Welcome back to the Maths Guy, everybody. Today we're looking at inverse operations between multiplication and division, so let's jump into it. Okay, we're gonna be looking at two different style of questions here. We've got our green chili challenge, which is just a division question, and we're gonna inverse it into a multiplication. And then we've got a missing number problem as well that we're gonna see how inverse can help us solve. Okay, so let's start with our green chili challenge, our first question. So we have 15 divided by five. So we know that if we have 15 divided by five, we're gonna get an answer of three. There are three fives in 15. So what does inverse mean? Inverse essentially means the opposite. So division is the opposite of multiplication. So we can use these same numbers to create another number sentence, which is multiplication. So let's see how we can do that. But let's have a little think about what we know about number before we start. We know that when we're dividing a large number by a smaller number, we are gonna get another small number, a number smaller than our first starting number. Therefore, it's logical to think that this number here, the 15, if we are making a multiplication question, will end up being the answer because two smaller numbers multiplied together will equal the bigger number. So therefore, my number sentence for my multiplication would be five times three equals 15. And let's check it, five lots of three, yes, equals 15. But I can see another number sentence here that would also work. What if we flip the five and the three around and we used our commutative law? and I put three times five, and I also know that three times five equals 15. So using the same numbers so far, I've made one, two, three separate number sentences. Well, I can actually see another one. I can see another division question because I think that if I get my 15 at the start again, and this time I divide by three, I'm gonna get five. So with the same set of numbers, I've actually managed to create four number sentences. And these four number sentences together are called the number family. And every question will have a number family, a different way of expressing the numbers using different operations. In this case, we have two multiplication and two division questions. Let's have a quick look at another one. Let's say I have 25 times four equals 100. Okay, so if now I'm wanting to find the opposite, the inverse, I can try and think about my number knowledge again, and I can see that my larger number here is 100. So if I'm wanting to create a division question, I'm gonna to need to put my larger number at the start. So now I can have 100, and knowing what I know now about my number family, it doesn't matter which way around I put my 25 or my four, because it's still gonna be part of the number family. So I can say 100 divided by 25, equals four. Or I could write 100 divided by four equals 25. Can any of you see the other question that I can have in this number family? I have two division and one multiplication, which means it must be another multiplication. And yep, I can see it here. I could have four times 25. Move those two numbers the other way around and I'll still get 100. Okay, so let's use that knowledge to try and help us with this missing number fact then. So here I have a question that says 12 times something equals 48. And this is a very common question that you're gonna see in exams. So I can see this is a multiplication question. So I know that this number and this number will both be smaller than my 48. So therefore for a division question, I'm gonna put my 48 at the start. And I can simply use now the only number that I have available to me, 48 divided by 12. And I know that 48 divided by 12 is four. Now I can check my answer by doing four times 12 should equal 48, which it does. So I've got now one, two, three of my number sentences. I can now get my other one, my other division question by putting 48, but instead of dividing it by 12, I'm gonna divide it by four, which equals 12. But the one that really helped us was this one here in order to get our missing number. Let's have a look at another quick missing number. Let's say I put 50 and I divide by something, but it equals 10. And this one's a little bit different because I actually don't need to do the inverse operation because I have one of my division questions, but if I simply put my other division question, which would be 50 divided by 10, still in the same number family, that's gonna equal 
5. So therefore, this question mark here could be replaced with a 5. Let's check it. 50 divided by 5 equals 10. Correct. Let me quickly get my next two number sentences, and I can see that 50 is the largest number. So if I'm now going to multiply, that number needs to come to the end, and I could work out that 5 times 10 equals 50, but also flip those numbers around, 10 times 5 equals 50. These are my number family. And there you go. That is using the inverse operation to help you solve both missing number questions and also being able to just check your answers and make sure you've got the correct answer. Let's think about the things to remember. Firstly, inverse essentially just means the opposite. Multiplication is the inverse of division, and addition and subtraction are inverse of one another. And then lastly, a number sentence can have a number family, and those number families can help you with all of what we've just been talking about. Okay, so now it's your turn. I would like you to try and find the four number family sentences for these three questions. Once you get them, put your answers in the comment section, and I'm gonna try and mark every single one. Good luck. Okay, there we have it. That is working with the inverse. Hope this video has been helpful. If it has, consider giving me a subscribe and a thumbs up. But for now, see you in another video. Peace out.